hi. Um, another Steph moment. I was typing on uh, yesterday's video. I was like, why is no one? Who's talking about decahedrons and things like that? <laughs> Hello, thank you for joining in. We've got Ava watching. Hi, Chloe. Hi, Gus. Hello. Brilliant. Hi, Logan. Hi, James. Hi, Ollie in South Africa. Amazing. Wow. All the way down to South Africa. Thank you for taking the time to join in, Ollie. Hi, Maisie. Brilliant. Um, I'll come back to the shout outs. Here's your challenge question to warm up. It says there are four types of triangle. So there's four different types of triangle. First of all, can you name them? Second of all, can you draw them? Try and be as accurate as possible. So have a go at those while I just read the feed. That rhymes, read the feed. We've got Finn. Hello, Finn. We've got Owen. We've got Robbie, we've got Tom and Broughton, hi. Hello, Rose, hi, welcome. We've got Harry, hi Harry. We've got Leo, hi Leo. Sarah, hi. Brilliant. Oh. Right, I'll come back to that. Sorry, it's just, it jumps sometimes. It's like, jump, 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 jump. Hope you're all okay. Well done for yesterday's lesson. We'll go through this first. And then I'm going to answer sort of a query that came up from yesterday's lesson. Then we'll start today's lesson. So there are four different types of triangle. Where's my waffle rubber? There it is. Can we name them and can we draw them? So the first type is what you would think of as looking like the traditional triangle. It looks like you have, be, you have to draw it very carefully though. Okay. Because I'm drawing it to make sure at least it looks like all the sides are the same length. And that is an equilateral triangle. Equilateral, I, I can never spell it. It's a good job it's not an English lesson, I bet. I can't remember if it's an A or an I, equilateral triangle. So that's the first one, and all the sides are the same length. Second one. And this one is called a right angled triangle. Why is it called a right angled triangle? Because it's got a right angle in the corner. Third one, you might have known this one as well. So in this triangle, these two sides are the same length, and this is called an isosceles triangle, an isosceles triangle. So we've got three. Those are the traditional ones you're taught at school. So this is the trickiest one, because it's the hardest one to remember. And there's different ways of drawing, I mean, there's different ways of drawing an isosceles triangle. It might be even taller. This one, still got three sides. One, two, three, but none of the sides are the same length and there's no particular, in fact, I'm gonna try and make that, try and make it as clear as possible. None of the sides are the same length. There's no particular form of angles in there. There's no like, right angles. So it's called a scalene triangle. And it just means that it's a triangle with three sides, but no particular facts to put it in these categories. So there's your four different types a triangle. Well done if you were able to draw them, but you might not have remembered all their names. Well done if you remembered their names, but not, not have been able to draw them. Well, double well done if you got all of them. Right, today we're going to be learning about lines linking into yesterday's lesson. But there was some debate that came up yesterday about this shape. And this is a circle, you might have all guessed. Now then, I said in yesterday's lesson that a circle has one side and I had a few queries about some people saying, oh, I thought it had, surely it has no sides. A circle has no sides. This, I just want to make it clear, is very up for debate. Okay, it's a grey area in the black and white of maths. So you could be correct because technically, again, a side is interpreted as being a straight line, okay? 
So if you count the sides, it's a straight line. And the circle has no straight edges. So you might think, well, it's got none. But the debate is, and by the way, my husband, who's a scientist, who's down at the who's at the moment, he thinks they have no, it, it has no sides because they're not straight. Okay. But there is the argument that scientists have, and Lara, I think you need to jump on on this, Theatre of Science, for uh, this. There is the argument that a circle actually has an infinite, infinite number of lines, and they're just so microscopic and tiny, something has got to form it going around. And even though we can see it as a curve, there is just little marks that technically make like like microscopic. So there's the there's the argument of non, one, and infinite. Also, when my husband said there aren't no sides, I said, well, when you find the outside of a shape, it's the perimeter, it's the distance around the outside. So you measure the outside side of the shape. And I said, well, when you, you can do it for the circle, for the circle it's called the circumference. And the circumference is the distance around the outside side of a shape. So technically it's a side, but that's just me having a, 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 like a joke argument with him. It's up for debate. So if you said yes, no yesterday, there was none, and you were like, oh, why did I get that wrong? You didn't get it wrong. If you said one yesterday, and you're like, woo, I agree with Steph, but now you're like, did I get it? Yeah, it's up for debate. Science and math changes surprisingly quickly okay i remember they used to think the world was flat christopher de columbus argued that it was round it changes so yes some people have been taught that there's zero some people have been taught that there is one some people have just been told that it's up for debate so just putting that out there right at the beginning of the lesson but today's lesson lines lines so we're going to be looking at the four different types of lines and we're going to be using our shapes from yesterday to help us. And I'm going to start, and by the way, this is to do with pairs of lines. I'm going to start with the horizontal line. Horizontal. And his best friend, the vertical line. Horizontal and vertical. Horizontal line. That. Everyone do this. Make sure it's not like this, your arm. Make sure it's not like this. It has to be flat. Okay, if you do karate, you'll be really, really good at this. That is a horizontal line. Horizontal line goes straight across. If you want, if you've got any paper and you want to have a go at drawing it, it goes straight across. Not like this, not like this. It has to be a straight line. Okay, from side to side. That is a horizontal line. Horiz horizon. Look, the, the word horizon is in horizontal. What is the horizon? The horizon is when you look into the distance, normally outside, you look into the distance, and you can when you look, you can see that the, it looks flat. It look the, the the space in front of you, this, you know, the, the sky then becomes the ground, or the ground becomes the sky. That's the horizon where the sun rises and the sun sets. Any direction where the earth then becomes the sky is the horizon. And it pretty much always looks flat unless there's the odd mountain in the way. Horizontal. So what's vertical then? Horizontal, vertical. Horizontal, vertical. So vertical is straight up, straight down. Okay, if there is, say, there's a, there's tends to be a wall in your house. If you look around, the horizontal parts of your house, like, and if you see, like you see, this is horizontal. It goes across. It's straight. If you look at your ceiling, there's a line that goes all the way around. It's horizontal. Okay, and then the vertical is the wall that goes up and down. Look at a door. A door. Top of the door. We've got a door. Okay. This bit here is horizontal. This bit here is horizontal. Okay. If it wasn't, your door wouldn't fit. It'd be 
if it was tilted, if it wasn't perfectly straight or horizontal, the door would either have a gap in between it or it wouldn't fit. And the vertical is up and down. I'm sure you can think of many, many places, many, many things, many, many objects in your house that are examples of horizontal and vertical. They're very, very important. Okay. Which one's which? Vertical, horizontal. I do this at school. If I'm teaching horizontal and vertical, I get kids doing it. And if a teacher walks in, they probably literally think I'm doing a PE lesson rather than a maths lesson. Horizontal and vertical, first two. Here's the other two. Parallel. Parallel. We did a shape yesterday at the start of a parallel. We'll come back to that in a minute. Parallel. It actually has a nice clue in the spelling of it. If I write my L's properly, like a proper teacher, that's a clue. It's quite nice. Parallel lines are two or more lines that are the same distance apart throughout. They are not ever, ever going to cross over. So they'll just go on infinitely forever, however long the line is. It could just be a really short parallel line. That's fine. That's okay. So however, however long the line is, it stays like that. Therefore, if you draw a line, and you draw another line, that is not a parallel line because if you keep this line going, it's going to cross over and hit the other line, not parallel. Okay? Again, I draw a line. Oh, uh, no, not parallel because they end up going to hit each other. So they have to stay the same distance apart. And the clue is in the word parallel because the two L's, if you draw an L properly, if you draw it neatly, same distance apart. So that's parallel. Horizontal, vertical. Parallel. <laughs> Horizontal, vertical, parallel. Can you see it looks like a karate lesson? So what's the other one? Because I said there was four. Ready? Perpendicular. Perpendicular. Right, are we ready? Horizontal, vertical, parallel, perpendicular. Do a T like that, straight. Not like that, not like that, like that. So if you draw a very perfect capital T like this, that is when two lines meet in a perpendicular fashion. What does it mean? You can do it like this. You can do it like that, they can cross through. What makes these two lines perpendicular is that they have to meet at a right angle. They have to be an absolute perfect corner. Think like a square, there's a hint for what we're gonna be doing in a minute. Has to be at an exact right angle. Horizontal, vertical, perpendicular, parallel. <laughs> Do vertical, do parallel, do parallel, <laughs> horizontal, perpendicular, but I can't see if you're doing it, but I'm sure you'll be joining in. Right, how am I going to apply this to yesterday's lesson? With the shapes. And you'll be pleased to know that I'm not going to draw the shapes again <laughs> because I wasn't very good at it yesterday. I have got some helping hands behind me. Um, but I will draw a couple. So if I draw a rectangle, I'm pretty sure I can draw a half decent rectangle. Right, if we think of our lines, so we've got, I'm going to put that horizontal, vertical, I'm going to put pa for parallel and per for perpendicular. That's our little very mathematical way of writing it. You know what? That's going to annoy me. That's not parallel. So you have to be really, really careful when drawing it. There we go. 
Which type of lines does the rectangle have? Okay, does it have any of these type of lines? Well, I tell you what, the top and the bottom are horizontal. So it's got two pairs of horizontal lines. So two lots of horizontal. It's also got two vertical lines. You could call that a pair. So you could say one pair and two pair. But I'm going to say there's two horizontal lines, two vertical lines. Does it have any parallel lines? Does it have any lines that stay the same distance apart? Yes, it does. It has one pair here because these two and these two stay the same distance apart. It will continue forever. And by the way, this is the posh mathematical way of showing parallel lines. Did you know? So you do like a little arrow. And also, these two are the same distance and they would continue. Now, I do you do two arrows to show that these two are buddies here and these two are buddies here. If you did one arrow, it might confuse, oh, is it that one and that one or that one and that one? These two are the same, these two are the same. So this, I know there's four sides, but it's two pairs of parallel lines. Right. Do we have any perpendicular lines? Do we have any parts that meet at a right angle? We do. Because this is perpendicular, as is this, as is this, as is this. There's four. So the, the rectangle and even the square is amazing. It's got a whole array of different lines. So let's try a different shape. Let's try a different shape. I'm going to pick a, oops, oh my blue tack's falling off, a pentagon. Stay on the board. Right, pentagon. Horizontal, aha, this is horizontal. Now you might think, well, what if it wasn't that way? What if I twisted it slightly? Well, yeah, that isn't horizontal, but if you keep it straight, can you see the bottom would always be horizontal, no matter which way you turn it? So technically, a pentagon does have, that is a horizontal side. Okay, in, that, in the way that I've set it out, it is horizontal. Does it have any vertical lines? Any ones that go straight up and straight down? No. They're all at different angles. So there's no vertical lines. Does it have any parallel lines? Well, let's check. This line here. Does it have another line that also goes like that? No. What about this one? Does this one have another line that goes... Now, this one here and this one here, you might think, well, they're sort of going in the same direction. But if you kept this line going, and you kept this like, can you see? They're getting closer and closer. So somewhere up there on my ceiling, they will connect. So no, none of them are parallel. Do any of the lines meet at a right angle? Now, obviously a lot of the sides do meet, but they're not at a right angle. They're actually all obtuse. They all meet, they all have, the pentagon, the inside angles of a pentagon are all obtuse. So that means they are bigger than a right angle. Okay, your turn. I'm going to give you a shape. And I'd like you to, you can draw if you like, or you can just write the facts of which lines you think that it has. Let's have a look. Hexagon. Off you go. Try a hexagon. Okay. Oh, there's so many people watching. Scroll back, scroll back, scroll, scroll back. Right. I'm going to try and scroll back as far as possible. We've got Lilia. Hello. We've got Jasmine and Sienna. Hi. We've got Rose watching. Lilia. We've got Maxim and Caleb, hi. Elimi and, oh wow, I can't pronounce that. Ayufi, I hope I pronounced that right. I'm so sorry, you've all got beautiful names. 
Brilliant. We've got a Steph in Wales. Another Steph. Hi. Hello, Elsa. Hiya. Brilliant. Hi, James. Brilliant. Ooh, isosceles. Someone got that from earlier. Brilliant. So I've, I've gone a long way back. I'm actually going to... So if I haven't already given you a shout out, obviously please say hi. If I have given you a shout out, try and give other people a chance. Oh, some people are putting some answers. Brilliant. Hello, Amber, 11 years old, hi. Super. Oh, Lachlan, I love your question. I'm going to keep that in my head. Hopefully you remember it at the end. What a great question. Some of you might have seen this question on the feed. Okay, I'm going to keep that question in my head. Right. Hexagon. Does it have any flat horizontal sides? Yes, it does. These two and these two. So there's two horizontal sides. Well, then you spotted that. I don't think I really need to write on the board. I use a pointer. So horizontal, horizontal. Does it have any vertical sides? No. If the shape's like this, no. If I turned it around, but as the hexagon, I've placed it like this, no, there are no vertical sides. Does it have any parallel sides? So this, when you're doing this, just look at each line one at a time. Now, here and here, the top and the bottom are parallel to each other. They would continue the same distance apart. So you've got... These ones and these ones. Okay, so I want to look at this one. Does this line have another body line that will continue going up and down? It does. The hexagon on this side, these are parallel to each other. Okay. So we've got two sides. Are these two parallel to each other? Yes, they are. So hexagon has got three pairs of parallel sides. Six sides in total, but three pairs. And does it have any perpendicular lines? No. All these, again, like the previous shape, they are all obtuse angles. They do not meet at a right angle. So there you go. Right. Your next shape I'm going to give you. Is this. Have a go at this parallelogram, and there is a big clue in the name. <laughs> Which lines does it have? Hello, Leo, William, Yasmin, Isaac, and Ryan. Wow, it's a lot of people watching. Sylvie and Austin and Broughton, hello. Hi, Kitty. Yes, Kitty, we worked together early. Hello. Hi, Tenny and Kia. Brilliant. Hello, Rufus. Hello, Aoba. Welcome. Oh, brilliant answers, guys. Super. Right, so let's have a look. Does it have any horizontal lines across? Yes, these two. So it has two horizontal lines or one pair of ho no, two horizontal lines, that one and that one. Does it have any vertical lines that go straight up and straight down? Now I know these two go straight up and straight down, but they're not straight because that is the straight line. These, I like to call a parallelogram a lazy rectangle is just, Lent over a little bit. The leaning tower of rectangle. So no, it's no vertical lines. Now, does it have any parallel lines? Well, the name gives it away. It does. It has these two here are parallel to each other. And these two here are parallel to each other. So it has two pairs of parallel lines. These two and these two. Does it have any perpendicular lines? No, because these, again, an obtuse angle, a bit too big. Right, I'm going to give you one more, one more shape. Oh, I've got loads to choose from. Ah, 
this is a good shape. A trapezium, which in America is called a trapezoid. There's another example. Oh, hang on, I'm gonna stick it carefully. I want to make it as mathematically correct as possible how I stick it on the page. Go for that one. Which lines does it have? I love the debate. I love that people are like saying, oh, I think it's this. And people say, oh yeah, I agree, or I'm not sure. Okay, even Lachlan's question from earlier, people have said, oh, I don't know, is this it? Is this it? Hello, Rose in Scotland. Hi. Hi, Shia. Welcome. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Ruby. Hello. Super. Oh, sorry. I'm missing out. You're all going so fast. Hey, hi, Eloise. I love the name Eloise. Hello. Hi, George. Welcome. Okay. So if you're just joining us, obviously you can catch up. All these, all my lessons are on YouTube. All the lessons I have done since March during the first lockdown are on YouTube. And I'll give you a little secret. I'm actually going to do a non-live lesson and sneak it onto YouTube. So I would, if you want to catch it, subscribe to my channel. Um, I know YouTube's big with all the kids. <laughs> YouTube wasn't around when I was your age. So I'd love it if you um, could subscribe and like I say, all my past videos are on there. Apart from shape, because this is the first time we've ever done shape. Right, a trapezium. It has two horizontal lines. These two. And these two are horizontal. Does it have any vertical lines? No, because if it was vertical, it would turn it into a rectangle. So no, these are too tilted. Does it have any parallel lines? Well, we've already said that these two are horizontal, therefore they must be parallel to each other. So it has one pair of parallel lines. This one and this two are a pair of together. You remember, you have to have another line to make it parallel. A line can't just be a parallel line on its own because a parallel line needs to, a friend to be parallel. A perpendicular? No, there's not many actually I've found that are perpendicular, okay? Because it's not straight. I will give you a quick shape, not a rectangle square, that does have a perpendicular edge, and that's a right angled triangle. Because you can see that this meets at a right angle. So a right angle triangle is an example of a shape apart from a square or rectangle that does have a perpendicular line. Right, the question before I go was on the feed, this is Lockwood's question but a few other people have asked as well, have joined in, is there such thing as a two-sided shape? Now, and then some people have said, oh what about this shape, what about this shape? Technically, no. There isn't, unless you go back to the circle debate from the beginning of the lesson. Again, if you don't know what I mean, re-watch this lesson. Because if you say that a semicircle to half a circle and then a line, if you argue that a circle has one side, then technically a semicircle would have two sides. But if you argue that a circle doesn't have any sides because they're not straight, therefore a semicircle would only have one side. Can you see the debate that continues this? It's a great question, and that's what I like about maths, it's interpretation, and you know, sometimes there isn't always the right answer. Okay, someone might correct me on that now, but you know, it's okay. Right, we have finished today's lesson. Well done, you've learned about the different lines, we've done some karate, we've applied our knowledge of lines to different shapes. Have a look around you, see if you can spot different types of lines in your house. I'm going to put a challenge question up based on today's lesson. I've actually picked the harder one out of the three, so give that a go in a little bit. Well done to those of you who submitted uh, poetry for the competition. I've had, I think I've had, I tried to count about 48 emails already in a day, so that's amazing. Um, thank you. I am going to put up later what the prize is, so look out for that this afternoon. And in tomorrow's lesson, 3D shapes. I love 3D shapes. 
um, you're going to be doing a bit of running around tomorrow. So not only will you need a pen and a pencil and some paper, make sure you've got some decent footwear up. That's a hint. Right, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye.